A design layout is defined as the way you choose to position your design elements in your selected design space, such as a page or a screen. A layout adds structure to a design project, but it also creates an emotional tone for the design project. A very chaotic layout will create a chaotic feeling in the mind of the viewer, whereas a tidy, perfectly neat and orderly layout will communicate a feeling of order and calm to the viewer. When laying out a design, a designer will often use a grid system as a design aid. A grid system is an invisible grid of lines that a designer sets up and uses to position and align design components on a page in a consistent and orderly way. Grid systems can often be complex, but a simple way of applying some of the principles of the grid to your own work would be through the use of guides in your chosen design program to ensure that all the different components on the page or screen are neatly lined up and aligned against each other. There are no bad or good layouts per se, but a carefully considered layout is designed with the goals of the brief in mind and will be more successful than just arbitrarily placing content on a page or screen with no careful thought. One benefit of a good layout is that it will determine the flow of information across the design project and ensure the viewer is reading the content in the correct order. A layout is also used to create visual hierarchy in a design project. Visual hierarchy is where a designer arranges content in such a way to imply the order of importance of the content. A designer will use size, color, typography, and other design elements to indicate what content is most important and which is less important. For example, let's imagine our party invitation again. Say we have the following content we want to put on our invitation. The type of party, the time and location, and then an RSVP. So what information is the most important? The most important information that the viewer needs to notice first is that they're being invited to a party. Then they'll need to know when and where the party is. So time, date, and place are tied for the next important. Finally, once the viewer sees the time and date, They'll know if they can attend the party, and then they'll be able to RSVP, so the RSVP is at the bottom of the hierarchy. We'll create this hierarchy through the type size and through using different type weights. And remember, we discussed type weights earlier, to ensure that the viewer reads this information in the correct order. Just by thinking carefully about your content and which order the viewer will need to read this information, you'll be able to refer back to this hierarchy as you design your project. Now, let's see how Amnesty International is using layout and hierarchy in their graphic designs. Amnesty graphics often show text front and center on the page. The simple layout draws the viewer's eye to the text, which is the most important content in these designs. And type hierarchy has been considered in Amnesty's brand document as well. They have a set of rules for how to visually organize content using different type sizes and colors for different levels of information, from the main headline to smaller text. Hierarchy is also reinforced through the use of yellow rectangles that draw the viewer's eye to the most important information. You can tell that Amnesty campaigns use a grid to keep their designs neat and tidy. They've designed different layouts and grids depending on the content and whether or not they use a photograph or they only use text. Now, imagine Amnesty didn't have such a neat, rigorous way of placing text in different situations. It would make their graphic designs feel less tidy and cohesive and less professional. By creating a basic grid and type of organization that goes across all of their branding, they're able to ensure that regardless of the content and the context, they're able to communicate their message clearly and effectively.